In my home town we told a strange legend of a farm where a fearsome albino caretaker hatcheted a trespasser, or where poor albinos had been sequestered and tortured by a mad scientist. It was all lies, all made up. We don't consider the consequences when we tell a legend. It was Hedion that the Sheehys worried most about. The young girl had been vigorous, giddy, with fine and flowing blonde hair, symmetrical proportions, and a penchant for any game that involved running and screaming. But when she turned 13, she suffered episodes of catatonia, somnambulism, and jags of mystifying talk. Lost in these fits, Hedion saw what was coming for her family, a chaos, a curse, the legend that would haunt her for the rest of her life. On the northern border of Springfield, Missouri, there once was a great house, surrounded by emerald woods, lake, and meadow, a home place and farm that, to the last in sorrow of its owners and heirs, acquired a nonsensical legend, marring all memory of its glory days. The estate became known, and is still known, if it is remembered at all, as the albino farm. Paper articles, death certificates, easily accessible in libraries and archives, show clearly no one on the farm was an albino. We never considered what the legend would unleash. Constant trespassers, thrill seekers, drunks, druggies, frat rats on snipe hunts, goths, vandals, and fire all turned loose by a haunted house tale, a spook story. Maybe a novel can give some dignity and humanity, some understanding back to a family cursed by all this.